Hello everyone and welcome to another transfer update with me, David Lynch. We're back at it again because Liverpool have finally moved back into the transfer market and they're very, very close to completing the third signing of this summer after Alexis McAllister and Dominic Sobersly. Now it's a name that I doubt many of us expected to be signing for Liverpool this summer, Wataru Endo of Stuttgart. As I say, not a player that many would have seen coming in. But before we get into that and the fact that it's a shock signing, I just want to go through some details in terms of where this signing is potentially up to. Now, we know that the player, and it's my understanding, is on Merseyside today to, to complete the formalities of a move. Now, that will include, obviously, undergoing a medical, signing his contract, and then the media commitments that come with signing for a big club like Liverpool, you know, doing his, his interviews and, and, and photos with the shirt and all that has, has yet to come. So he's doing that today and he's very, very close to completing the move. Now, it's my understanding that that's... That move will be worth around 19 million euros. Um, obviously, a, quite a hefty fee in terms of a, a player coming in who's in the final year of his contract. But Stuttgart had several reasons to drive a hard bargain. He was their captain. He's also the Japan captain. Uh, and also, they know about Liverpool's desperate need for holding midfield reinforcements after selling Fabinho and Henderson. So it's been easier for them, I guess, to, to push up the fee in terms of negotiations, particularly as well with Liverpool missing out on Caicedo and Lavia recently. They know how much Liverpool need to fill that position. So have driven a hard bargain on that one. So a €19 million Euro fee agreed, according to my sources. I also want to touch on the fact that if things progress as expected in terms of getting this move done smoothly, Liverpool have got quite a bit of time. If they can get him registered by, by 12pm on Friday, and that is the expectation at the moment that they will, then he can be involved in the squad to face Bournemouth this weekend. I wouldn't expect him to start. We've spoken about the fact that Liverpool have got that clear vacancy in holding midfield, but I still think it would be a big risk to throw him in with very little training behind him. I think Jurgen Klopp's preference in this case is going to be to blood him slowly, particularly as he's coming in to a new league, having spent the last few seasons in the Bundesliga. But there's, there's big talk around the player. Let's not say that he's a player who's coming in with low expectations around him. I mean, I've been really intrigued by the, the reviews that have come out about Endo from the Bundesliga over the, the past 24 hours or so. So much praise for him. He was play, playing in a, a Stuttgart side that has basically spent the last three seasons fighting against relegation, and yet he's clearly been the standout. All the experts in the German top flight would say, you know, he's, he's such a good player with a high, you know, a high enough ceiling to maybe come in at Liverpool and make a really, really big impact. He's very intelligent, will run for days, and those are two things that you know Jurgen Klopp absolutely loves in a player. He wants that energy in there, but he also wants that intelligence, knowing how to cut off passing lanes. So could be a really, really smart acquisition. I know Liverpool would say it as well. They would point to the fact that, you know, OK, he's been battling against relegation, but you look at Genie Wijnaldum, Jordan Shakiri, both were signed from clubs who ended up being relegated from the Premier League that season. And they went on to play a big, big role in Liverpool, going on to lift a number of trophies. So they're not scared of making that sort of slightly left wing left field signing. Um, and it, also, you would look at the fact that the, the, the stats that are coming out around him in, in terms of his Bundesliga contributions, you know, really high in tackles, interceptions, uh, good with the ball as well. These are all things that you want from your holding midfielder, particularly at Liverpool as well. So some really good reviews coming out of him. So could really sort of turn out to be a shrewd signing. I think the crucial element we've got to consider here in terms of how the signing will be considered is what exactly the role he's going to take on now. I was minded when I saw that the news of this signing break in last night. I thought about a quote that Jurgen Klopp had said during pre-season one of the press conferences held and it was about James Milner actually who obviously departed on a free transfer this summer. He said, he said of him, James Milner always came on and finished the game off. We have to have a player for that role. Now, if Endo is coming in to fulfil that role, he looks to me in terms of statistically and the reviews, as I mentioned, he's getting from Bundesliga experts. He looks like he could be a really, really smart acquisition in terms of that. He has that experience behind him, but also the engine to get about and close out games. You know, he's good enough to start the odd games, particularly because Liverpool are in the Europa League this season as well. There won't be huge demands on him to play Champions League football or, or particularly play every Premier League game or anything like that. If he comes in as a squad option like that, then as I say, it could be a really, really smart signing. I think the thing that will decide if he's viewed in that way and, and if we view it as a shrewd acquisition further down the line is what Liverpool do next in the market. Now, it's my understanding that Liverpool are still looking at that midfield market, but we still don't know and, and Liverpool don't want to offer any guarantees in terms of what they do next. And that is understandable, particularly in the aftermath of missing out on Caicedo and Lavia recently. They don't want to make any promises about what's happening next. But it's my understanding that they are looking about, uh, looking around at what is out there in terms of what could be 
a better a, a complementary signing to Endo, and that, that would be someone more in the age bracket that we used to that 23 24 on the cusp of, of really reaching the peak and someone who has got ex enough experience behind them but could still develop a little bit more under Jurgen Klopp so that that is the market they're looking in now a few names that we could throw out there that we, we know Liverpool like the big one and one we've spoken about earlier in this window is Czech Decore at Crystal Palace now there have been reports coming out that Crystal Palace value him at around £70 million. Obviously, that is on the hefty side for a player with just one season of Premier League football behind him. But he was Palace Premier League player of the season last year. The fans voted him the player of the season. So I think that shows how highly regarded he is. He was at Lons prior to that as well, and Liverpool had looked at him there. So they have enough information, you would say, on the player. I think the key factor here is in terms of what they could get the price down to. £70 million does seem on the hefty side, as I say. Can Liverpool get that to a more reasonable fee? I do think they need someone of that profile to come into the midfield, someone who is a, a more long-term option. I mean, as at Liverpool... My source at Liverpool is saying that, you know, basically admitting that Endo is clearly not viewed as the future in that position, that they need someone who's a little bit more long term. So maybe that could be Decore. A couple of other players who I've seen mentioned in reports, something written by Neil Jones recently, actually, that Aston Villa pair, Kamara, Bubakar Kamara, and obviously Douglas Suiz, they are two players again who fit into that sort of similar age bracket, both holding midfielders or can play in that position and would look and they've got that bit of Premier League experience behind them, but also that ability to grow as well. So maybe they are a couple of players who could come onto the radar. We don't quite know how that's going to shake out at the minute. I will always admit that to you that it's, it's not entirely clear who, who Liverpool's target is going to be next up, but I think they're going to be looking in that age range, in, in around there in terms of experience, for someone who would really be a, a, a good a good mix with Endo in terms of you've got that experience closer there, who can play the the odd game and, and come in for a few starts, but also then someone who is, is, is about to hit that peak age and would really, really be a good complementary fit for McAllister and Soberslai because really I think you saw from that Chelsea game, the opening game of the season, that, that those two players, we want to let them off the leash. You want them high up the pitch, feeling comfortable, feeling like they've got protection behind them. So it's very, very important that Liverpool get this next signing right and they've got two weeks to do it. So it won't be long till we, I'm sure that we hear more information in terms of who they're targeting next and, and, and who's going to be on the market for them and who they'll push for to follow Endo through the door. Hopefully we hear some news on that soon. Now, there has been a name thrown out there recently. And I want to touch on this one. Again, reports came out just before the news of Endo coming to Liverpool were breaking, and that was that Sofia and Amrabat that Liverpool had come to were very, very close to an agreement with Fiorentina to sign the Morocco midfielder. Now, it's my understanding, and I've written this for this is Anfield last night that Liverpool are not close to signing Amrabat. In fact, there's no expectation whatsoever that they will follow up on their interest this summer. That to me makes a lot of sense. I, um, I have no reason to doubt that. I think you know Amrabat. He's 26 years old, so he's in that sort of peak age. Probably not going to be better than he is right now. Um, and if they wanted that sort of more experienced head who was going to come in and complement a younger signing, then I, I, I think Endo is going to be that man, isn't he? So I, the, the idea that you would sign Amrabat and Endo doesn't make any sense to me. And as I say, I understand that he's not one that Liverpool are going to chase. They're not going to follow up that past interest because they have watched him closely in the past. And he is on the radar of Manchester United is a good example. If they make the right sales, he could be heading there this summer, but not a signing that Liverpool are going to make this summer. So one that all fans can now rule out. So just want to finish up with, with touching on another thing, obviously the big news, and I haven't done a video for a while, so I missed out on talking about this, is, is, is Moises Caicedo and Lavia and that whole situation. Now, really disappointing for Liverpool to miss out on both. And, and they've obviously, and, and very understandably, I would say, received a lot of criticism for their involvement in that in that situation and the fact that they failed to sign both and, and lost out on both to Chelsea. But I would say there is a, a balance to this situation. I think that they do deserve some criticism in, in, in some elements and, and maybe not in others. So just to go through it, I mean, Caicedo, I, I said in my last video, and you, you may want to go back and watch this, um, it, my last transfer update was that Caicedo, Liverpool had not really done the work on the players' camp over the last few months, they always said that they thought he was going to end up at Chelsea and that seemed to be his preference. So I've no doubt they were given encouragement 
last week in terms of by the players' representatives to say yes, come in, get the bid in. We you know we, we would be more than happy to come to Anfield. But it's quite clear now with the way that that has shaken out that that was a, a ruse really to 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 get Chelsea moving to to get their bid into Brighton to make sure they paid enough to get Caicedo to Chelsea. So you have to say Liverpool have been played a little bit there. They've been a little bit naive in the way that that one is shaken out. And I think you know if they had put the work in on the players' side, maybe that preference in terms of going to Chelsea wouldn't have been as solid. Had they been working on on the players' agent over the last few months, maybe they could have turned his head and guaranteed that Caicedo would have come to Anfield this summer. And it's a real shame they didn't because I think he's a fantastic player and a player who you could see in the opening day of the season would have been a really good fit for Liverpool would have worked so nicely behind McAllister behind Sobers Lie. so a real shame to Liverpool missed out and as I say they perhaps can take a little bit of the blame for that in terms of not doing the homework on the players side of things and, and then being tempted in late and, and, and used to, to push Chelsea's bid in now if they can be criticised for that one thing I, I think they maybe can't be criticised for is, is the Romeo Lavia situation I think around that they had a clear valuation on the player. They didn't think he was worth over fifty million for for a, a player who was nineteen years old. Uh, they, they, they stuck to that early early part of the window. We know that that later bid went in that was way above that fee as Liverpool got a little bit desperate. But I think one thing you can't criticise him for, and I've seen reports suggesting that that Lavia felt that he had to go to Chelsea because he was disappointed in the way that Liverpool pivoted away from him towards Caicedo. I, I don't quite buy that. My my understanding as a, a journalist really is I think I think that's an unfair characterization and the victors in these situations always get to sort of set the tone and, and, and they get to write how history plays out, don't they? And I think in the Lavia situation, there's a bit of revisionism here, the idea that Lavia feels like he was pushed out by Liverpool or, or didn't feel wanted enough and as his Ted chose a club where he's likely to be much lower down the pecking order. I think Real, realistically, the thing that is attracting these players a lot to, to Chelsea and the thing that Liverpool have found hard to compete with for Caicedo and also for Lavia is the fact that they're handing out these seven, eight-year contracts uh, that are extremely lucrative. I think that's something that Liverpool you know, would say they, they, they can't really compete with at the moment and not something they want to go, go along that route. And I think it's something that, that the Premier League are being pushed to look at in terms of are Chelsea breaking spending rules? We will have to see how that shakes out. But again, like I say, with the Lavia situation, I think that was probably a bigger attraction than the idea that he's going to play a bigger role at Chelsea than he is at Liverpool. That 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 to me is is nonsense. So, as I say, we're going to wrap it up wrap it up there in terms of what Liverpool have missed out on. Uh, I'm sure, and as I said earlier in the video, there are so many more developments to come. I think Liverpool are going to do more in this transfer market. So after signing Endo, so plenty more updates to come. Again, if you want to keep track of all that and, 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 and hear my thoughts on, on what they're going to do next, then please do like and subscribe and follow these transfer updates. Plenty more to come in the coming days. Only two weeks of the window left, so a lot more for Liverpool to do, a lot more work for Liverpool to put in, and hopefully we'll see more players signing soon.